It's time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. Much of the eastern two-thirds of the nation will see fair weather over the next few days. However, all eyes are on yet another strong system along the west coast. Rainfall has begun in the northern coastal areas. However, widespread coastal heavy rain and snow is going to begin today and will last through midweek. Gusty winds and locally considerable flash urban and small stream flooding remain possibilities. Closer to home, warming temperatures return today and last through most of the week. Temperatures by tomorrow and Wednesday are going to be running 10 to 15 degrees above seasonal average. The next system will move across the Intermountain West and Central and Northern Rockies tomorrow and Wednesday, well north of us, giving us some windy conditions. Quiet weather and warm weather conditions are expected through the remainder of next week with no precipitation chances. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. As a result of a computer glitch that made absolutely no sense, it caused the Friday edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio to neither be heard nor posted online. Can't even really explain all that happened. Gremlins. Well, that's one answer, I guess. Anyway, we apologize for the issue. The Alamogordo School Board is having a regular meeting Wednesday evening at 6, featuring a presentation by Love, Inc. We have been partnering with the Alamogordo Public Schools for 13 years now. We provide bags filled with kid-friendly foods to kids in our public schools. That's Alamogordo and Tularosa Public Schools on the weekends, and these are weekend bags that go home with them. These are for kids that they're not necessarily going to go hungry, but they may be underfed on the weekends. Susan Payne speaking with Crazy Radio. Also, the nomination for the Mexico School Board's Association Excellence in Student Achievement Award, board members advance planning and upcoming events, followed by a closed session. The Village of Tularosa's regular meeting is happening Wednesday at 6, regardless of what the website says. Mayor Debbie Cooksey is asking for approval for all Village Fleet to have a GPS monitor installed. Also, several other presentations are also scheduled from local citizens. The Otero County Commission is accepting letters of interest for the voluntary positions for the Keep Otero County Beautiful Advisory Board. Interested applicants submit a letter stating their desire to serve. Letters of interest must be received by the Otero County Administration Office, 1101 New York, or call 575-437-7427. The Republican Party of Otero County has a special meeting this Thursday. We heard from Vice Chair Josh Beasley. On February 22nd at 6 p.m., we have our regular monthly meeting. Our senators and representatives will be at our monthly meeting to host our annual legislative roundup meeting. Come on in and ask questions, find out what happened in the legislative session, the good, the bad, the not so good. Just bring your questions. Now's the time to be informed. Don't try to, you know, hear it from the second party. Come hear it from the people. Come hear it from the representatives. That's happening on February 22nd at 6 p.m. It's a potluck dinner. Bring your favorite dish and share it with the rest of us. I've got a pretty special recipe I'm looking forward to cooking and sharing with all of you guys. So come on out and see us on February 22nd for the Legislative Roundup. You can see the Republican Party of Otero County Facebook page for more details. The Smoky Bear Ranger District on the Lincoln National Forest will be conducting prescribed pile burns tomorrow through Friday. Crews are going to be targeting slash pits in approximately 94 acres of the Grindstone Prescribed Burn Project area. The burns will allow crews to clear fuel buildup and are an important part of the fire mitigation strategy on the Lincoln National Forest. Exact ignition dates depend upon agency administrator approval and may be postponed on short notice due to developing conditions at the burn site. Residents in the area can expect to see smoky conditions on the roads and in the surrounding areas of the burn during and in the days following this project. The project will be closely monitored for hot spots after the burn is completed. Kitty City will be at the mall this Saturday along with Animal Control. Come to the White Sands Mall on February 24 for the Kitty City Adoption Event from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. We will have cats from Alamogordo Animal Control and Kitty City for adoption as well as dogs from Alamogordo Animal Control for adoption at that event. Your forever friend is waiting for you. Kathy Denton from Kitty City. The Kitty City New Mexico Facebook page has details. The website has profiles of available cats.
Well, today is Monday. Time for a pup date from Animal Village NM. Hi, this is Sunny Eris with Animal Village NM in beautiful, not foggy anymore, Ruidoso. You know, it's 2024, and most people value their dogs and their cats. And if you doubt that, if you go online, almost every other ad has a dog or a cat. Banks, their flyers have dogs or cats. If you watch your TV, there's Animal Planet, and there's ads about animals, and there's rescue ads. That's because most people value what love our dogs and our cats bring to our lives. But sadly, New Mexico has the highest pet abandonment rate in America. That means that in New Mexico, pets are less valued, that people don't see what these wonderful blessings from God bring to us. People tie up their dogs, chain their dogs, leave them outside as outside dogs. Maybe they have a big dog outside and they have a little dog that lives with the family inside. And that dog is broken. That dog barks. He escapes. He digs under. Maybe they're spayed or maybe they're neutered. Maybe they're not. And then that causes even more problems if they're not because then they're escaping. They're causing unwanted litters in New Mexico where animals are abandoned more than anywhere else in America. So if you run into me this week and you see a sad look on my face, I'll tell you why. We were supposed to get a grant from the state of New Mexico to resume our spay-neuter program for low-income pet guardians. And like organizations all over the state, we have been waiting with bated breath to resume our program. Last year, we provided 200 spay or neuter surgeries in Otero County for people who otherwise had no way of doing it. Can you imagine how many litters we prevented from being born to suffer, die, be abandoned? It's astronomical. And unfortunately, the whole program with the state of New Mexico, the grant program, fell apart. It is now suspended, and they gave out no funds. We had directed more than 231 people who were also going to be funded for their individual pets they neuter surgeries from the state. That's not going to happen either. So now all of it is falling on Animal Village NM, and we don't have the money to resume our program without your help now. Please go to our website, animalvillagenm.org, become a monthly sponsor, or make a one-time donation, animalvillagenm.org. Org. The Alamogordo Chess Club is meeting today from 4 until 7 at Plateau Espresso, 2724 North Scenic. It is casual chess, no membership requirements or fees. Just show up with a board, set it up, and play. News from around the state in just a moment. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. Local news from local perspectives from local voices. Alamogordotownnews.com. Local sports, local events, and local happenings and more. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Alamogordotownnews.com. Heard daily on Crazy KALH Radio 95.1. Direct Creek Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about directory plus with its red cover features colorful yellow pages and lots more it's no wonder people all over use directory plus it has so much more information you can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything look on the plus side directory plus i'm a big fan of directory plus senate bill 271 has made its way to governor michelle lujan grisham's desk the bill focuses on pre-trial detention the bill states if someone is out on conditions for an active felony case and they commit another crime the judge will be allowed to hold that person without bond. Donna Anna County District Attorney Gerald Byers told KOAT this fiscal year, 23 pretrial detentions were filed in Donna Anna County, and 10 of those were denied. That's 10 instances where a person who has already proven that they've, they've got a felony charge, but they're going to ignore the court's orders and then go and get arrested on a second felony charge well, that's 10 instances where the public could be made safer. In the 30-day legislative session of the roughly 20 bills the governor listed as part of her public safety legislative agenda, only four of them made it to her desk. Both houses are well aware that I'm frustrated that not enough or certainly more public safety measures got up. Her solution? It's not off the table that we have a public safety special session. But how can that work? 
Political expert Brian Sanderoff had this to say. If there's going to be a special session, they need to get together. The governor and the Republicans need to get together beforehand to come up with common visions of what can be successfully passed during the legislative process. Some lawmakers believe changes may be on the horizon to tweak session formats in the near future. Others, such as John Block, suggest that calling a special session will only broadcast how badly the governor has failed despite Democrats having a near supermajority in both legislative chambers. As part of the ongoing saga with regards to the federal investigation into Albuquerque's drunk driving unit, which led to five officers and a commander placed on leave and nearly 200 DWI cases dismissed, Albuquerque City Councilor Louis Sanchez is suggesting Police Chief Harold Medina may need to be terminated. Sanchez spoke to KOAT. Are we going to hit the snooze button? Are we going to wake up and uh, start dealing with very, very hard issues to deal with and make big changes? Albuquerque Mayor Tim Keller said Sanchez should be focused on making Albuquerque safer and refers to the actions of Sanchez as political posturing. On Saturday, Medina and his wife stopped at a red light in his unmarked black APD Ford truck when they spotted individuals starting to argue near an intersection. That's when one of them pulled out a gun and fired at least one round at another person who was running in the direction of Medina. Medina then attempted to drive both himself and his wife out of danger when he struck a car. The driver of that car was taken to the hospital in his unstable condition. Neither Medina nor his wife were injured in the crash. This coming Saturday, there's going to be a Meet the Candidates event in Las Cruces. Elizabeth Winteroud spoke with KALH. February 24th here in Las Cruces at the Game 2, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. We are going to have a meet and greet for some of our candidates here in Dona Ana County. Some of them, as myself, go into other counties as well. Who all is going to be there? Myself, Elizabeth Winteroud, Rebecca Dow, Kim Skaggs, and... A newcomer to the crowd is Samantha Barncastle Salopec. The game, too, is located at 4131 North Rise Drive in Las Cruces. The Elizabeth Winter Round for New Mexico House District 53 Facebook page has details. County Commissioner Amy Barella recently attended the Republican Convention in Las Vegas. She later appeared on Steve Pierce's podcast, Inside New Mexico, and discussed what was covered including election integrity. We have to make sure that the voters feel comfortable with their vote being counted, and I think that the Republican Party has taken the right approach to this, and it really invigorated me to come back home and make sure that we have plenty of poll watchers and challengers to be able to have the boots on the ground just to oversee the election processes. Morella went on to discuss the security processes in place for the ballot drop boxes, you know, the ones that were legal, but legislation to legalize them wasn't passed until after the fact and how there are cameras watching them. But questions remain if that footage is ever actually reviewed. You can hear the interview in its entirety on the Inside New Mexico podcast. Sports and weather are coming up next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, it just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. There are six games for New Mexico girls basketball today, including Santa Teresa at Chaparral, and seven games for New Mexico varsity basketball today, including Chaparral at Santa Teresa. Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. Partly cloudy tonight, sunny tomorrow. High today of 66, low tonight 45, high tomorrow 72 degrees. In Cloudcroft, sunny skies today with winds gusting as high as 23 miles per hour. Partly cloudy tonight with winds gusting as high as 22. Sunny tomorrow, winds gusting as high as 26. Your high today in Cloudcroft, 46, low tonight of 34, high tomorrow 51 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. Also, check out the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That's where we post our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so already. 
That way you too can remain informed of the goings-on in the Tularosa Basin. Well, that concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero.